Um, my name is uh, Leo Casey. Um, I'm the executive director of the Schenker Institute, who's uh, organized um, this conference. Um, and I would um, like to welcome you all um, here today. Um, I, I have this feeling that people are going to keep on rolling in because we do have um, 250 people registered. Um, so maybe um, just the three o'clock uh, starting date is a little daunting for them. Um, so um, we're gathered um, for this conference today um, because evidence that democracy is in crisis surrounds us. The election of Donald Trump as President of the United States um, is certainly among the most significant manifestations of that crisis. But even before his election, um, um, going back certainly during the election campaigns when there were violations of democratic norms at every turn, um, things that none of us thought we would live to see, um, one major party presidential candidate calling for the imprisonment of his opponent, um, even before the election, um, it was quite clear that the norms of democracy that um, we had become accustomed to were in serious disrepair. There were the politics of obstruction in government. Um, there was the asymmetrical polarization of American politics um, with the emergence of a far right, not only generally, um, but within one of the two major parties. And since the election, um, those signs have only increased. It began with the attacks on immigrants and refugees, the attacks on Muslims and Mexicans, on people of color and the LGBT community. Um, it involved attacks on the right to dissent and protest seen most recently just this last week in the assault on the rights of athletes to silently and respectfully protest. We saw this um, attack on the right to dissent and protest take a particularly violent form in Charlottesville, Virginia. And we saw a president who in effect excused what happened in Charlottesville. And now, um, just this last week, the Supreme Court has taken on a case um, in Janus versus Asmi, um, which is a frontal attack on the rights of unions to organize and to give forceful representation to the working people they represent. And what is happening in the United States is unfortunately paralleled across the globe. We have the experience of Brexit, of the Le Pen candidacy in France, the Wilders candidacy in Holland, the emergence of far right parties throughout Europe, including for the first time recently a far-right neo-fascist party in Germany for the first time since World War II. We see the consolidation of increasingly authoritarian regimes in Eastern Europe and Russia. And even through the rest of the globe, we see such things as the rise of radical Hindu nationalism in India and the Duterte regime in the Philippines. The evidence is ample. Um, but we're gathered here not to recite the litany of everything that is going wrong, but to open up a conversation of an understanding the political and economic dynamics that have led us to this moment. And in beginning to craft um, in, in, in important ways how to respond to those dynamics. And so over the course of the next day and a half, we're going to look at the challenge of populism. What is it and how do we respond to it? 
We're going to look at the relationship between growing economic inequality and the loss of trust in government. We're going to look at the decay of political parties and civil society and how that leads to the rise of authoritarianism such as Trump's, Trumpism. And we're going to look importantly at the redefinition of citizenship and its rights in increasingly exclusionary and restrictive ways, such as voter suppression efforts and efforts to deny birthright citizenship even while it is enshrined in the American Constitution. Our purpose here is to simply open a conversation. And so we have deliberately invited a diversity of viewpoints and perspectives um, in hopes that we can learn from each other. We start with no particular viewpoint, no set analysis, no given prescription on how to address the crisis of democracy other than a simple conviction that democracy is essential to what we value in our society. The dignity and rights of all people, of every class, race, creed, gender, and sexual orientation the pursuit of our common good, and economic and social justice and opportunity for all. We come in a common belief that what we need is more, not less, democracy. And with that, we will go to our first panel. Thank you.